All right. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of Let's Talk About Sex as Followers of Jesus Christ. Um, so this is the second installment of the series that Pastor Grayton is doing, and this is our second episode here. And I'm just so excited for you guys to, one, just to share um, what you've gotten. Maybe if you had a chance to listen to um, the first one, drop some comments in here. And again, if there's something you want to hear, something you know you guys want us to talk about, um, other than let's talk about sex as followers of Jesus Christ when we're done with this, we are more than open to um, those suggestions. So, jumping right in, I have in the studio today with me some of my favorites in co- our favorite covenant partner. So, I have Miss Trina um, Winchester, brother Ralph Winchester, um, sister Wendy. Hooker and Sister Betsy Wader. So, you guys, um, I always start off the first um, moment and say, all right, when Pastor said a few weeks ago from the pulpit that we are going to talk about sex as followers of Jesus Christ, I just want to know, what did y'all think? And anybody can just jump right in. There's no wrong answers. There's no right answers. It's just, what did you think? I don't really know what to think because in the past, that wasn't a topic our pastors talked about. Mm -hmm. But this is a new time, a younger pastor, and I was just intrigued. I was waiting to hear what he had to say. Okay, okay, awesome. And I got on the edge of my seat because... Pastor, he 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 goes in the deep water. Mm-hmm. He goes in the areas <laughs> that a lot of uh, pastors haven't gone into. Yes. So I was just curious. Well, what could he want to talk about? Um, you know, when you know when you talk about sex, it, you know, sometimes you say, well, I, he he can't be talking about me because, you know, I know uh, I'm married, but he's going to attack. You know, the single folks they mm-hmm. out there doing um, something that's. Not co- that's contrary to the word of God, you know, but I just try to keep an open mind and say, mm-hmm. you know, let me see um, where he's going. Okay, okay. And I just thought, wow, finally. Yeah. I've been in that's church true. all of my life, pretty much, most of my life, mm-hmm. until, you know, we get grown and do our own thing. Exactly. And we find our way back. However, we've always been told what not to do, mm. never why. Yes. According to the word of God. Okay. It's never been explained in detail. I'm a grandmother. This is the first time I am hearing what wow. pastor is teaching. Mm-hmm. And it's it's awesome. It's just wow. awesome. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm it was on the edge of my back seat in too. The day. They didn't they just didn't, didn't talk, talk about it. Right. Right. Exactly. You know, it was a, almost like forbidden oh, yeah. in the pulpit to like to talk about it unless you were addressing single people on mm-hmm. what not that what we can't exactly. do exactly. and so i said that last week that every time someone is one talking about sex it's always geared to us singles as yeah. to exactly. yeah. don't do it don't yes. do it don't do it and i right. said well tell me some of the things that i can't do stop saying exactly. like what i can't do and so when he said it i already know him just from like all that he does is like okay he's got something good and so just from last week and then this week how he transitions Mm -hmm. and bring it Mm -hmm. all home that he's not just beating up Mm -hmm. on singles so he's not just singling um, Mm -hmm. us out and so I'm sorry did you want to um I mean I was just like uh (laughs) has to touch on everything so this ain't a surprise to me, okay. but I would really love to know what he's going to talk about because being single, mm-hmm. it's a struggle. Yes. And uh, I, I just, I want to hear everything he got to say, but I'm just feeling like I don't even want to come because I'm getting a little jealous now. <laughs> like, how long, Lord? Yes. Stay my husband. Yes. But then <laughs> see how he backed it up where yeah. after he read the scripture where it's better to marry than to yeah. learn, yeah. but to be careful exactly. about who you're connecting and who you're marrying. Yeah. Yeah. Because like I said last week uh, for our guests and then if this week is your first week, I am um, 
twice married already, um, widow and divorced. Oh, wow. And so, so I know young. people don't know that about me. Oh, yes, okay. at, at 22 and a half. Yeah. Um, and so um, when I say, oh my goodness, I want to be married. I want to have um, the husband and I want to be able to fulfill those wifely duties and things like that. But I look back on the past on the marriages that I had Last week helped me so much that if I'd had this lesson at 19-year-old Danita or 20-year-old Danita, mm-hmm. there wouldn't have been those first marriages, and that those mistakes um, that I would say. And so I love the fact that he brings it um, straight from mm-hmm. the Word. Right. He yeah. always says, this is what the Word says. And so I'm just going to share... Today he came from Proverbs uh, 5, 15 through 20, and the title for today was God's Perfect Plan for Sexual Desires. And so even after last week, I'm just like Brother Ralph, like on the edge of my seat, like what is he about to say? Like what is he about to do? And so um, some of his points, I like to go through the points. So again, you guys, you can find today's um, message on our Facebook page and on our YouTube page, um, Southern Friendship Missionary Baptist Church. So point one was sexual fulfillment with their spouse. And I'm so glad I have my Mary a uh, couple in here. And so what did you guys kind of think when um, he, he had his first point? Like were there any things that kind of jumped out of, at you um, on his first point? When he's talking about um, the sexual fulfillment um, with your spouse. I see my brother right here. Y'all can't but, see, but he pulling out notes. It looked like he was taking notes. So no, I, 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 you know, see, I'm, my, my brain doesn't get me across the street sometimes. <laughs> but um, as far as talking about sex with, with, within within your spouse, you know, way he, he mentioned that, you know, my I, I made a commitment to God that my, my focus, all my needs is geared towards my wife, whatever I need. I go to my wife for, and that's the um, the point that I, I get from that when he say, "Drink from your own cistern," mm-hmm. you know, and um, don't let your water run out into the street, you know. So what that tells me is that, you know, as as a married couple, it's between us two. Mm-hmm. I don't share. I don't look for anybody else to fulfill my desire. She don't should look for somebody to fulfill. Uh, her desire, mm-hmm. you know, so it's it's a commitment that, and it's a lifelong commitment until death do us part. Right, right. And one thing I was realizing is that just because you're married doesn't mean the box is checked. Mm-hmm. Pastor mm-hmm. went into detail yeah. for married That's people. Right. Uh-huh. It's not just about single folk right. and abstaining. It's about just like you said, married people and restraining. Yes. There's a lot of work for married people to do inside of marriage, you know, inside of the sexual aspect as well. Uh huh. And him teaching on that was just wow. Yeah. Was like, right, yeah, right. As well. Things like right, going off, like yes. things you just didn't know. Yes, because I wrote down yeah. abstain and restrain. Right. So when yeah. he said it, I was like, okay, abstain and restrain. And so. I I knew that the abstain part was for me as being single. I am to abstain, and so I was so curious to see how he was gonna, tw- uh, you know, twist the restrain part. Because I'm like, wait, how do you want married people to restrain? Like, isn't that the op-? and so the way he just paralleled and then exactly. brought the two home? I'm like, okay, mm-hmm. then, exactly. there you have it. Exactly. Yeah. Pastor the Frankie Green worked, worked that um, scripture, and then yeah. there wasn't. I don't think that um, was only for the married people. I think that was like it's like a cheap guide for singles too. So yes. when I get there, I already mm. know what to do and how I'm supposed to do this and that. So uh, yeah, I don't think that was just for the married people. That was for singles too. It Absolutely. just made me sitting there wondering how many married people heard. The topic, what Pastor was going to preach about, mm-hmm. and just instantly thought, "Oh, this isn't for me. Exactly, mm-hmm. this isn't for me. Oh, this right. isn't for us. We're married." Uh huh. Uh huh. No, 
no, he went deep into. He seemed yeah. to be more into the married than he was the single, and, and so yes, that's how to remain uh-huh. happily married. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. What our job is yeah. in the marriage. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. So it's not just about single folk yeah. mm-hmm. how to have sex mm-hmm. according to the will of God as right. followers. Right. We're learning also. Yes. Which was and what uh, I, different. Yeah. And what I find so funny is that, you know, he he, he gets a joy out of standing here watching people <laughs> squirm. <laughs> <laughs> Especially your expressions. Yes, yes. Could you guys okay. see any expression? Yeah. Like your own yeah. expressions? Yeah. Uh-huh. That's the this best part of the we, sermon. My friend today. We can't uh-huh. see. I've never yeah. sat through a whole sermon. Uh-huh. Like, hold on, come on now, pastor. <laughs> Why do I still have this? Uh-huh. <laughs> But Watching funny. a lot of the seniors uh-huh. giggle and smile <laughs> mm-hmm. and uh-huh. squirm. <laughs> yeah, that and squirm. Question. Yeah, and squirm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Like they, you yeah, know, squirm. they've been married for 50 years, but now they sit up here acting like, you know. Because yeah. they hadn't heard this. Yeah, I know. It's new yeah. to them. It's not yeah, it, it, it makes me like happy. I said back in the day, mm-hmm. it was... It makes me happy to hear the married couples uh, giggling and, uh-huh. you know, they agreeing with past. Uh-huh. I'm like, I can't wait to get there. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, because he said they both want to please God. And so even if you're married and if you're single, in either category, we want to please God. So as a married couple, they want to please God. As a single woman... I want to please God, single man. So we're all on the same playing field when it comes to wanting to please God. Mm-hmm. So this is just one um, one step or, or one thing that he's singling out on. Okay, those areas of pleasing God. As married people, this is how you do that. You want to drink out your own sister. Mm-hmm. As single people... Don't go spreading your um uh huh uh huh and, and wait he said something I was just like this man I had I to come uh, out the door was it um what did he that say you, you creep better than us and, but God can still see you uh, or I don't like know that? he said something and I came out the door I said okay I I'm through with him and so then when he's talking about he said pleasure in the bedroom is a gift from God I don't know if. Um, even as married couples, do you guys um, feel that? Like, is that something that you knew beforehand, or is that something that it's like, oh, th- th- this is a gift? Like, th- did y'all know that beforehand? I, I can't say that I necessarily looked at it as a gift. Now, understanding it, um, thinking in a different manner, mm-hmm. thinking in the in the way that God designed us, because last week He talked about um, comfort. Yes. You know, and so, you know, when you talk about comfort, we were designed to comfort one another. Right. So, you know, a lot of times, I mean, for me, I didn't think in, in, in that level. But now I, I have a better understanding, you know, uh, of what he's saying. And, and I have to start looking at things from a biblical perspective. Right, right. Because I think sometimes we... We don't look at it from that perspective, and we more so look at it from like life lessons or from examples, and sometimes they were not the best examples. So, I've seen married people and I've seen people go to the courthouse and you know get married, but what did that look like? Um, so just to see it from uh, another aspect to say, okay, this is a gift from God. And if we look at it as being a gift, I would say that going into at least that second one, knowing it was a gift, it wouldn't have been as hard to throw the gift away because it's like, oh, this man crazy. Like, I got to divorce him. And so when you're looking at all of those things to death do us part, I know we, we don't look at it. To right. that degree, right. Right. because it's the divorce is clearly telling us yes. that a lot of us are not right. getting there exactly. Mm-hmm. They're not mm-hmm. getting there um, with the knowledge of knowing that okay, this is a lifelong commitment. Mm-hmm. This is the person I'm saying I'm going to commit myself to for the rest of my life. And when on the first Sundays when they're standing up, like oh, thirty years. 
25 years. Yeah, I so said, in a row? I be mean, like, in a row? <laughs> like, what the hell? Nine years, a hard time. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> 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 So I, if we look at it as that gift and know that this is something precious to him, I believe that we would find more healthy relationships and even going into courting or dating someone like, God, is this my gift? Because he sure ain't acting like it. Like, why his eyebrow like that? My family, they'll tell y'all, I, I'm the worst. And I, I'm sorry. I, I say that nine years um hard time i say that jokingly mm -hmm. because this, <laughs> this this is my queen and this is the best thing that have happened to me uh-huh okay. you know so i don't take it lightly that you know god put us together you know i know that I, when i look at it i wasn't a um a follower of christ when mm -hmm. i got married okay when i met um, my wife it was that we started when we were uh, dating we say we needed um you know, we need to start putting Christ in our life. Okay. You know, so we're not gonna continue to do the nasty. Yeah. <laughs> uh -huh. Basically. Okay. We you put your foot down. You put you that foot down. Them. You stop being convicted. And look, and yeah. it works. We can continue to do the nasty. Okay. okay. Not please. Mm -hmm. You know. But that's so, where I have a problem with. Um, you know, some people jump and get married because they enjoy. Um, doing the nasty, uh -huh, right? uh -huh. and if the person said you ain't getting it unless you marry me, uh -huh. that's not a good. That's what Listen, to been do. there, been there. I mean, that that see, just to jump up book. and get married, and no, no. so you won't burn because but that, you like the nasty. Yeah. But this <laughs> might not be for you, right? You know? yeah. right. And right. Then you end up divorcing and bad feelings. And that's yes. why. That's why it's so important for. Um, this message to get to our younger, yes, yes absolutely, you yes. know, uh, uh, people yes. because they are dealing with um, so much challenges. Just mm -hmm. like you know, Pastor talking about you know feelings. Mm -hmm. You know, they have to understand it's okay to have those feelings, but they have to understand how to control those feelings. Right. They're living in we're living in a, a time now where society, like I said. Every uh, every you know, uh, women walking around half naked. Yes. Men are walking around half naked as well. Uh -huh. You know, so everything is about exposure. So exposure. That, that you know that temptation that everybody have. You know, you go in the store, you see uh, a, a, a display full of candy. You don't know which piece of candy it's, that you uh -huh. want. Uh -huh. But the bottom line is that you can't have that. It's not it's not your it's time not yet. You have to understand. You have seasons, yeah. uh, and you know, so you have to keep pouring that into these young kids because they have so much peer pressure. Mm -hmm. Peer pressure, you know that. Yeah, we yeah. think we we're, we're thinking from a worldly perspective. Mm -hmm. Even when uh, even with married couples, they are looking at uh, marriage from a worldly perspective. This uh, person that they idol on TV, that's mm -hmm. a movie star mm -hmm. uh -huh. that has been married. Four and five times, they so exactly. they're in their mind. They think that it's okay, exactly. so they're not looking at it from a biblical perspective. Exactly, and, and it's so readily accessible. Absolutely, right. don't be testing it out right. like that. You, when you get married, you should get married for life. Exactly. When I married my wife, I told her we're going to grow together. Yes. Mm. Yes. And I hope Pastor does touch on maybe in the next sermon or before the series is over, um, the aspect of like what uh, Sister Bessie just said. If you are thinking about marriage because... Better to marry than right. to burn. Right. Uh -huh. because, yeah. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That's how people think. Uh -huh. exactly. <laughs> I don't want to go to hell, so <laughs> you're going you're to do what you want to do. Right. And uh -huh. he focuses on the courtship oh. part of it. Teach, uh -huh. yeah. teach, yeah. you know, teach people how to court mm -hmm. and what the court courting looks like, maybe according to the Bible. Uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. I hope with, he touches on that. With that courting, they have to understand what's so important is that they have to become friends. Yes. yes. You know, because when when they are able to become friends, there are a lot of things that they're going to have to sacrifice. They're going to have to accept mm -hmm. both ways. Mm -hmm. You have to accept things from her. She has to accept things from right. you. Right. You know, so with that, you, you know, the things that you um, might be dissatisfied with, 
you would then have the ability to accept that, knowing right. that with the two of you working together, you can make that change for the better. Right, right. So what it's would have been acceptance. a deal breaker once you look at it through the lens of how God sees this person? Because some things, and, and what did he say? Um, he may have gray hair or he may have lost yeah. his hair. Mm -hmm. Be like, okay, because I'm looking at the outer appearance okay. yeah. and not looking at the heart. Right. And so um, I shared last week, um, Pastor did, uh, he had a sermon on um, loving like Christ loves the church. So mm -hmm. I'm like, I know what I, I know what that looks like. I need you to love me like Christ loved the church. Not like you love yourself. Mm -hmm. Not like you love your Adidas shoes. Not like you love your car. But how he loved me to go to the cross. Those are things now that it's like, okay, I have to be more um, cautious on what the natural I see and take it to God to say, okay, is this even the person that you send my way? Because Satan knows when you're on the path and he mm -hmm. knows when you are so diligent and faithful in your walk. He's like, oh, I know she like light skin. So mm -hmm. let me have the light skin guy <laughs> come in the grocery store and be like, how you doing? I want to take you out. Be like, okay. So he already knows and those are the things that's always going to get us the lust of the eye and the pride of life. Those are all those things that he already knows. And so I love how he breaks it down and how yeah. he puts it so plain that it's no way you can misinterpret what he said. Not if you're listening. Not exactly. <laughs> Not if you're listening. And he always goes back. And when he went back to um, chapter... Um, five and verse 15 and then he said well look what it says in 16 and look and so he kept taking us back yeah. to what the scripture says so don't misinterpret mm -hmm. what i'm saying this is literally yeah. coming from straight the from the bible and yeah. then we'll look sometimes and think like oh is that what it meant because mm -hmm. you can read something mm -hmm. and then he'll come it's like Oh, aha. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. That's what that meant. Mm -hmm. And then on his second point with um it says sexual frustration um in marriage. And so no, I, fascination. 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 Oh yeah, I, I wrote that. Uh -huh. <laughs> yes, I thanks, the Wendy. Part, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I'm making up my own points, y'all. <laughs> so sexual fascination. Mm -hmm. Um, in marriage and I think some people do get fascinated mm -hmm. with the idea and so even when we say oh my goodness I want to be married I want to be married how hard is it to be married very hard to be married because now you got one two people they're now choosing to become one versus me and I tell this story all the time like in my singleness I like my stuff the way it is I know when I go home my house is the way I left it <laughs> my clothes are organized the way I like it my okay, shoes are the, and now yes I am very much so my family tells me like stuff has to be turned a certain way so I know he's already working on me because I'm gonna probably kill someone he's like why you put that shoe right there like get that out of here so how do we um so did anything jump out on the the sexual fascination um in marriage for anyone to what point I mean I just I just felt like uh you know people that have all those years of marriage they still fascinated with each other like I want that Mm. Like y'all still look at each other and are turned with the giggly, Ooh, the googly eyes. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Thirty years, forty years, what? Y'all yeah. still looking at each other like that? I yes. want that. And yes. anybody sitting there listening to that, if you aren't, then I guess that was an instruction mm -hmm. you know, mm. that this is what you should be doing. You yeah. should be looking at her that way. Yeah, yeah. So you should be looking at him that way. For the merry and for the singles, what to do Thanks when you get there and like what y'all need to do to while y'all there. Yes, yes. And, yes. Yeah. And, and that's why, it's like I said, um, when you talk about um, keeping yourself up, you know, I know that even for myself, even if I'm home, 
Um, oh, yeah. and and wifey might be at work. Uh-huh. I'm still when she when she comes home from work. I got my smell good on, and, I, and she looking at me like, "Where you been?" You know, I ain't yeah. been nowhere. I'm sitting there waiting for my wife to come home. <laughs> you know, Listen. so yeah, you you know, you have to keep that. You know, where he I talked about it. keeping that, um, keeping going. that flame uh-huh, going. You uh-huh. know, um, you know, dating, have date nights, and uh-huh. um, you yeah. know, just be able to sit down and. Uh, watch a movie together and just mm-hmm. sit there and cuddle. Those things are, are, are all important. Yeah, man, so she's walking around the house with a bonnet on all day long. <laughs> I'm going to put my bonnet on. She put hers on. <laughs> and then when you say uh, you think that you're doing something when you're doing whatever you're doing uh-huh. and when you get married, it's fireworks. I'm uh-huh. just like, I'm on, so it's this more to it. <laughs> 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 Come home, Wendy. Uh, Where is my husband? <laughs> he's preparing you. Just, just, yeah. just yeah. stay yeah. anchored in the Lord. He's coming. Oh, yeah. Just stay anchored. And you know, that's oh, oh, oh. that's the terminology. I'm 76 years old now. Mm-hmm. I'm hearing that. Amen. Yeah. It, it seems like, you know, I, I even got to the point where I said, God, you have to um, cover me because... The ones I chose, they mm-hmm. even work. Let him choose. You know, now I need you to stay. Yeah, let him choose. And find somebody for me because yeah. I'm, I'm tired of, you know, trying to choose the person for uh-huh. myself mm-hmm. uh-huh. because it's not working for me. Right. Yeah. So I'm to the point now, you know, if it happens, it happens. If it don't, it don't. Okay. And see, it, it has to be even harder for you know as we as we're aging because yeah. we feel like our our clock is it's, running out. Tick, tick, so it's tick, harder tick, for tick, you know. Um, so you know, tick. trying to live the right way now mm-hmm. is no problem for me because, like I said, I was out there and I I did my thing, mm-hmm. but it did work for me. Mm-hmm. Right. Right. choices. <laughs> And okay. if you don't have yes. him on this side, he have him on the other, other side. side. Listen, <laughs> listen. You take care of me, I'm fine. <laughs> right, right. I hope it's Pastor built has on. a really good um, marriage counseling class. Though, oh too. my gosh, yeah. yes. They do. I took yeah. his class as everything. a single person. Oh, really? I did. I when didn't know went, you could do that. Absolutely. So if they offer it again, I oh, okay. I say take it. And again, mm-hmm. that's one of those things that the 20-year-old Danita would have sat down in that class and been like, mm-hmm. oh, thanks for all this great information. Yeah. And I would have looked at that man and been like, all right, see you later. <laughs> because n- none of what you learn in there was happening in that relationship. Right, right, so right, right, I right, right, honestly, right. and I say it over and over, that class is the best class. Okay. So it gives you um, nuggets and it tells you you know, things to do for your spouse. And so you write a vision um, for your marriage. You write a mission. So as a single person, I wrote my own mission for how I'm going to live while I'm waiting now. And so I'm like, Lord, I done messed up so many times. Am I going to get another chance? And so I've been, feel like single for so long and so many years because the and that clock tick tick mm-hmm. tick tick tick. I'm like, okay, five years, six years, mm-hmm. seven years, twelve years a slave. Like, geez, <laughs> like when is it ever going to happen? So I stopped saying the when mm-hmm. and just put myself in the place to just focus on where he has me now. Mm-hmm. But then again, I go back to past. He's like, well, where do you go to make yourself available for your mate? If the he's house. out there, <laughs> right? I said, no. um, he said, cause you don't go no, anywhere. You don't, no, he's no. like, you, you don't do anything. He's like, so where do yeah. you? I said, it could be the FedEx man coming to drop something exactly. off at my yeah. house. He's like, true. Back in the day, we clubbed or we, you know, right? right. See, that's, that's just right. it. Uh-huh. And that was we, a, a good thing. Exactly. <laughs> We're running around trying to find uh, find someone, and that's telling you that. You don't have faith in God to mm-hmm. put somebody exactly. in your life. Mm-hmm. Yes. You don't necessarily have to be at the library, or, mm-hmm. or you can find somebody at a hand dance class. Yeah. Oh, right, wait. Is that what you're Yeah, you're 
what is that? Uh, what, how, uh, what, what is that dance class? They still have <laughs> classes. <laughs> But I'm just saying, Look, I man, wasn't. Wendy, Wendy, we're going. We, we're talking about that story because it's two. I got my, I have my story. She have her. Oh goodness! Oh goodness! You know, y'all but, hear today? So somewhere it it, it, yeah, it, it matched. Yeah. It, it, I wasn't awesome. looking for uh, a that's woman or a wife. Okay. You know, something happens. that happened. Mm-hmm. Yes. That's when it happened. So yeah. So I was, so, uh, yeah, I was so. looking at. I don't know. Um, it was a pastor. It was probably on social media. Mm-hmm. He was saying that you don't have to go out and look for something if you're asking God to send exactly. you someone. Like, exactly. it's going to happen in your daily routine. Mm-hmm. So, you could be going to work or at work or, you know, stopping at the store, gas station, wherever. You'll meet your person if mm-hmm. you're asking God to send that person. You don't have to go out to a club yeah. or, right. yeah. or bar. I don't want me to be right. there anyway. Uh-huh. But not saying that all of them are bad, but... But definitely yeah. don't want to bar because that's not where we're supposed to be. Yeah. Club, that's not where we're supposed to be. <laughs> you know? Um, just stay on... Just, 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 to send you somebody. He's not going to send them to the bar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so yeah. I mean, I can say that. I don't want to bar, <laughs> though, but, huh. So next time you see that... Headlights in the in the, the sirens, you know, in your rearview mirror. Smile, cause that could be your voice. Oh, I'm always smiling. <laughs> that could be she is. She is always okay. smiling. Look, she is. I'm like, oh, I love her. Just your whole spirit too. My face so, hurt. Uh uh-uh, uh, from smiling. <laughs> Yes, yeah, so if it's gonna get you what you what you need or what you mm-hmm. God has sent you, smile on them. Yes, <laughs> but keep in mind also everybody's blueprint and it's not it's necessarily it's your different. blueprint. Exactly. You know, somebody might have found somebody at the bar. Mm-hmm. You know, yeah, and it worked have, out. You know, and somebody might have found somebody at this uh, supermarket. I would love to hear what everybody's happening. What, what, what was that one thing he said today that just, mm, he was like, oh, that's good. Uh... No, I I think yeah. (laughs) No, I think the main thing is when he did the roller coaster. Yeah, how Mm -hmm. you waited in that line for so long, and then you get on the ride, and then two seconds, (laughs) two minutes is over. That spoke volumes. Like you're on this path, you're walking, Mm -hmm. so. You're abstaining, and so why let the two minute roller coaster ride take you almost like where you have to start from square one? Mm-hmm. So that was just like, okay, that's 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 good to know. That's right. good to and know. When uh, when that happens, because I've been there, uh huh, the conviction Ooh. is so heavy, yes. And the guilt is just like, oh my Said gosh, you. I did. I, I've been abstinent for all this time. Uh-huh. And I actually did this. Uh-huh. Like, why would I do that? But, uh, and yeah, that was the high point. Mm-hmm. Um, when he was talking about uh, the license to drive. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> um, that analogy I'm, is good. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. Yeah. He and puts a lot. He it, it, it's a lot. Like, cause you just start writing, and then my paper is just like full. It's like okay. Then it now I'm all over the place. So that's why I'm like, I'm just gonna like sit back and go back over the notes, and then say, okay, what else do you have to say? Cause I mean, he can just unpack this. And he the got scripture. three more, mm-hmm. three more sermons on this. Uh huh. He How made this comment more? about the dress. <laughs> What was that about? I mean, he, and it's the word in the scripture. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But, but it's, it's 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 about still having uh, admiration for your for, for your, your spouse. For your spouse. Uh, so that was the basis. Yeah, for still that. still loving on your spouse. You know, and not just the breast part. Uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Well, the, the breast is, is is what uh, what's appealing to the eye. Okay. You know, I think he was yeah. speaking from a male yeah. point of view. Yeah, mm-hmm. and that's why that's why I'm trying to mm-hmm. yeah because I letting I, women know I watch my works. wife every day. Mm-hmm. Okay, letting wives yeah. know you are still at no age. That's what that's what okay. I got yeah. from it. Uh huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. That ageless that attraction to you from your husband is ageless. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Okay. Right. I like that. 
and then um, I'm just going to read uh, his application because we're almost to the end of our time together. Doesn't okay. time fly when you're having fun? Mm -hmm. So um, the application for today was determine today how can you actively protect and nurture the relationships in your life to ensure they reflect God's wisdom and faithfulness. And so again, guys, we have been talking about sex as followers of Jesus Christ. And this was today our second um, installment of this series. And we hope that you guys will take the time to, again, go um, check out the the message for today on our YouTube or on our Facebook page. And I'm going to yield to my guests if they have anything they want to share um, before we go off air. I will open it up. If you don't and just want to say peace or goodbye or whatever, um, the floor is yours. Oh, and thank y'all so much. Because some people are called in the middle of the week like, hi, can you come? And they're like, sure. And then some people I just grabbed <laughs> as they were walking out the door. And so I just thank you guys for your um for your time one because i know i want to always re be respectful of your time so i want to thank you first and then i'm going to open the floor for any final um, words or comments anybody um, one of the things that i have is that um people have to understand we we are all going through something um they have to understand when they are feeling that temptation that they have to, and that's why they talk about an accountability partner, somebody mm -hmm. that you can reach out to, um, whether it be a single person or a married couple that's, you know, at the brink of stepping out on his wife or, or her husband, mm -hmm. you know, to be able to have somebody to um, talk to him off the ledge, so to speak. One of the other things that I would like to say is that, you know, to apply the uh, principles of scriptures to our daily lives. Yes. You know, said, uh, you know, we keep God first, you know, we we have to um, um, yield to the Holy Spirit. That's our guide. That's what tell us, you know, when we are doing um, right and wrong, especially when yes. we're about to do something wrong. So yield to the Holy Spirit. Yes. Awesome. Thank you. Anyone else? I'm just glad that he's teaching this series to the church. Yeah. Because um, I'm old school, you know, like I said, I'm not used to that type uh -huh. of teaching. Uh -huh. <laughs> they always telling you what you shouldn't be doing. Uh -huh. you, know, and uh -huh. you got, when you're single, but they don't really go into detail like he's going, and this is going to help a lot. Yeah. But, you know, he don't want the young people in there, but at a certain age, I think some of them should be in there. And Absolutely. Hear this, these these um, sermons he's doing on this. And also, it, this thing about People making people feel like if they don't marry, something wrong with them, you know. Yeah. How come you ain't married? I mean, oh. I don't want to be. I yeah. mean, got to be something wrong with you because you ain't married. Mm. You know, I never liked that part of it. That's uh, society does that. Yeah, and, society and, you know, and I let them know, you know, that. I'm waiting on God. <laughs> yes. But God yeah. has for yes. years for me, and I'll wait as long as it takes, and yeah. if it don't come, it just don't come. Yes, I but, love that. You know, but, He's doing a good job on that. I have to give it to him. I was in awe when he said he was going to teach it. I said, what are you going to tell these people? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he, he's really he's really working it out. He's working it out. I love it. I love it. Anybody? All right. I'm just glad down. that he's teaching it. Okay. I wrote, do my desires line up with God's desires for my desires? Mm -hmm. I thought that was powerful. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I have to thank Pastor Brayton because we are learning a lot. And yes. in learning that, we are, um, just like he says, learning to follow better. Mm -hmm. Yes. We're learning to be better followers. Yes. I told you we're running out of excuses. Yeah, you know, yeah. Keep, yeah, especially around here. Right we don't have a reason to say we didn't know. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. exactly. And with the way that we have all of these outlets now, and so even if you're not here in this building, it's gonna, it's on our YouTube yeah, page, just it's on out. our Facebook, and, and people are sharing, and that's yeah. the whole purpose for. Um, checking in and mm -hmm. so oh she at she's at church today and so that's that's how this message is um, going to get out there 
So, you guys, um, that wraps up our second episode. Let's talk about sex as followers of Jesus Christ. I'm your host, Janita Keys. I, again, have the wonderful pleasure of being in my studio today with Sister Betsy Wader, Sister Wendy Booker, Sister Trina Winchester, and Brother Ralph Winchester. So, join us again next week. Uh, for another edition of um, Let's Talk About Sex as Followers of Jesus Christ. Peace.